गाइस दिस इज नंदनी एट सर्वाइविंग मेडिकल स्कूल 101 एंड वेलकम बैक मैरी क्रिसमस एवरीवन आई होप यू ऑल हैव हैड अ वंडरफुल ईयर सो अ कपल ऑफ वीडियोस अगो आई हैड टोल्ड यू गाइस टू आस्क मी एनीथिंग यू वांटेड टू नो अबाउट मी whether it be about my personal or professional life and even though this video is a couple of weeks too late i figured better late than never so today i'm going to be answering all your questions and also right at the end of the video i'm going to be announcing my giveaway winners so stay tuned for that and without further ado let's get started okay so something that i get asked almost all the time is where am i from so i'm indian and my family is from calcutta that's right i'm bengali however i was uh, raised in delhi that's where my parents are from uh, that's where i've lived all my life so uh, whenever someone asks me that i to be honest i identify more to be from delhi because i never really lived in calcutta but i am bengali another thing that a lot of you want to know is uh, which college am i studying in which medical school am i from so i'm studying in kasturba medical college in manipal that's in karnataka and uh, yeah i have been away from home for 3 and a half years now okay so uh, the next question is that did i encounter any ragging when i came to college or uh, is there a culture of ragging in my college and to be very honest i cannot speak for other medical colleges but in kmc uh, there is a very strict anti ragging policy of course your seniors do interact with you and sometimes you know that can be a little intimidating specifically when you've like just come to this brand new environment and you're like a tiny fresher so uh, yeah th- sometimes it's intimidating but like that's i think that's more a personal thing rather than you know it being ragging so yeah we did interact with our um, seniors but uh, no we never at least from i mean i can't speak for anyone else but personally i never encountered any form of ragging um something that our college likes to do as you know like it's kind of a college tradition is that our uh, freshers night which as far as i know in every other college is like you know the night you dress up and it's a party and all of that for us um we our seniors tell us a dress code and when i say dress code it's probably the most hideous clothes that you know you can ever imagine or you can ever encounter and if i have pictures from my freshers i will uh you know insert them on the screen so uh, that is the only you know way in which if you consider that ragging which i honestly don't it's just you know a way to kind of um uh, break the walls and have fun and to be honest even though uh, on my freshers night i looked the most ridiculous that i have looked in my entire life i think that was one of the most amazing times that i had in first year so i hope that answers your question that uh, no there is no culture of ragging in manipal at least in my college that's kmc i can't speak for any any other Another question that I get asked really frequently is that uh, do I have a medical background as in are my parents or family members doctors and the answer to that is uh, no absolutely not uh, not just my parents nobody in my family and I mean including extended family are doctors both maternal and paternal sides included I think I'm going to be the first doctor in a really 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 long time if ever so uh, yeah I am not from a medical background and my uh, passion for medicine is just that it stems from my love for the subject and passion and i think that answers the next question that why did i choose medicine as a career and you know why do i want to become a doctor the plain and simple answer to that is that i love the subject of course you know there are a lot of like other amazing things about this profession but uh, my primary reason has always been that i absolutely absolutely love the subject i am in love with it and even when you know it's like even when it's really really hard cuz this course is difficult there's no getting around that but to be honest even you know on the hardest nights and toughest days and even when i'm like cribbing 24/7 there is truly nothing else that i would rather be doing okay so the another thing a subscriber asked is uh, what is my favorite color uh, i think it's pretty obvious i mean if you look around in my room It's really obvious that I am absolutely obsessed with pink. I mean so much so that uh my stethoscope is pink. Uh pink just is it's it's something that it's a color that makes me happy. It's it's 
pink is like on a different level of obsession with me. like my obsession with pink is real you guys i mean uh, so much so that there are people who like you know one of my really close friends uh, she enters my room a lot of times and she's like oh my god there's too much pink around it's giving me a headache that's how much i love this color so another thing that i get asked a lot is what are my hobbies and what do i do when i'm not studying or you know outside of my passion for medicine what else am i you know really passionate about and uh, to be honest i am a huge nerd i love reading i don't know if you guys can see behind me that's my book uh, that's my bookcase and uh, those are not medical textbooks you guys like my medical textbooks are completely separate those are all just like fiction and non fiction books that you know i read and these are, this is just what i have here in my hostel room i think in at home i have like double or triple this and um, i also have a kindle and uh, i also have books on my phone so yeah i am i am a bookworm i i love reading i ha i have always loved reading i was that kid who you know whenever we used to have like a games period in school i would run off to the library and uh, yeah i it's something that i got from my dad he is an avid reader and um, i enjoy reading something crazy like that that's one of my easiest ways to de stress in life apart from that i love writing and uh, yeah i like uh, cooking which is very weird because for the longest time i used to be the most disastrous cook like i couldn't boil water like i i was that bad but uh, living alone for 3 and a half years you know you have to learn to like you have to grow up and you know learn to adult so uh, i've recently gotten into cooking and i realize that i enjoy it a lot so yeah if i have to say what my hobbies are it's definitely probably uh, going to be uh, reading writing and cooking not very exciting but uh, i'm just being honest am i an introvert or an extrovert i think i'm a little of both because uh 80% of the time i'm the kind of person who would like to stay in and my idea of an ideal weekend is probably you know staying in with my closest friends and uh you know watching a movie or cuddling up under a blanket and you know reading a book or something like that but then there are those times when you know i want to go out and party and socialize and have fun so um i think i am more of an ambivert that's a little of both what is my guilty pleasure <laughs> my guilty pleasure is sugar i love anything sweet like i can just eat dessert ah within desserts if you ask me to pick a favorite it's like you know asking a mother to pick her favorite child i love desserts period like it it could be anything if it's sweet i'm sold but uh, specifically i guess uh, if if i can if i have to pinpoint my go to uh, favorite dessert it's probably strawberry cheesecake i love strawberry cheesecake or even banoffee pie i i have recently you know been obsessed with uh, banoffee pies so i really love that too and uh, ice cream is like a staple for me like ice cream is like my comfort food when i'm sad or upset or stressed out you buy me ice cream i'll be happy so uh, this kind of brings me to the point a lot of you guys ask me what sweet tooth means cuz uh, my bio on my instagram profile says i'm a sweet tooth so a lot of you ask me what sweet tooth means sweet tooth basically means that i crave sugar all the time that's what it means okay another thing that a lot of you guys have asked me is that how i balance all of my uh work and uh, academics and professional commitments along with you know having a healthy social life and along with you know my friends and family and all of that and uh I probably am not the best person to answer this cuz uh, it's something that is a work in progress for me and some days I'm good at it some days I'm not but largely I would say that it all stems from your mindset and um to be very honest I disagree with the concept of a work life balance like you know when you call it a work life balance it implies that your work and your life are two separate things and they are kind of competing for your attention which is not how i look at it i think the fact that um 
I'm a medical student and I'm going to be a doctor it makes me a better friend and it makes me a better sister and it makes me a better daughter and so on and so forth. And the fact that I have those relationships, I have the love of my friends and my family makes me a better medical student and a better doctor. So um, I think uh, the biggest thing for me is the way I look at it. I don't see it as two separate things. And uh, yeah, of course, I mean, we are all human. There, there are days when, you know, work has to take a back seat because, uh, you know, a friend really needed me or there was some social uh, commitment that was more pressing. And then there are days when I probably don't pick up any calls or answer to any text because uh, my studies or my work are a priority. So, and apart from mindset, the other thing is that you have to be flexible. I think... Um, Life is something that's very unpredictable and, you know, there is no rigid, I don't think that having a very rigid, you know, I work till 5 p.m. and then is my personal life, at least for our profession, at least in the medical profession, that doesn't really work. So I think being flexible has, um, I think something that I've really learned after coming to college is to, you know, become more flexible about uh, what requires, you know, my attention and what is more important so you know learning to prioritize and becoming more flexible and also I have to mention I am really blessed that uh, my family and friends are probably the most understanding people in the whole entire world uh, there are days when you know I'm studying and I probably haven't talked to my parents in two days and you know they call me and they want to talk and I'm like mom I'm studying I'll talk to you later and they understand that they respect that uh, they know that you know I have work is important for me and uh, sometimes you know family and friends have to take a back seat even my friends like uh, I have friends who are also outside of uh, medical school and even they understand like you know it's just that they know that I'm there for them and I love them and uh, if they need me I am there but sometimes uh, my work takes you know a forefront and I think that that's that's the only advice that I can give you guys have don't look at it as you know two forces prioritize on a day-to-day -day basis what is important today and uh, be flexible because growing up our parents have been working and you know both of them today are really successful in their careers and I grew up with that example that they set for me that, you know, you can have it all. You can have an amazing career and you can be the pioneer in your field and you can still uh, have a great family life and a great social life and, you know, you can have amazing relationships and friendships uh, with people. So I think uh, from a very young age, uh, that's how I have been conditioned that I do not think that, you know, you need to sacrifice one for the other. So I hope that answers that question because I know I have been asked this question so many times and I understand why this is such a pressing concept because it took me a while to, you know, figure it out. And to be honest, I'm still figuring it out. That's what life is. The next thing that I have recently been asked is how was 2017 for me? So um, if you guys watched my goodbye 2016 video that I posted last year in December, I hinted at 2016 not being a great year for me. And um, I don't want to go too much into detail, but uh, yeah, 2016 was really rough. So coming into 2017, my, you know, the way I looked at 2017 was I wanted to kind of put a reset button in my life. I felt like my life had kind of derailed a little bit. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to kind of, you know, get back on track and, um, heal because uh, I felt I was I felt like I was really scarred by certain situations and people so uh, coming into 2017 I was uh, I wouldn't say I was a broken person but uh, yeah I was definitely you know not probably at my best and to be honest guys 2017 has been absolutely spectacular it started off a little slow but even so you know I mean I don't think of course, you know, life is never always up. I mean, there have been ups and downs like with anyone's life, but largely 2017 has actually been a really, really good year for me, touch wood, because um, I think that I grew as a person and um, I matured a lot 
and uh, the mistakes that I made in 2016, I know that I will never make them again. And you know, when you're coming from a bad situation, it takes a lot of strength and courage to take that situation and be like, it's okay, you know, shit happens and uh, I can move on from it and rebuild myself and I did. I rebuilt myself, I, uh, the parts of me that I didn't like, I improved, I fell back in love with myself and uh, I met amazing people in 2017, I have made so many new friends and you know people who are like invaluable to my life I kind of uh, even professionally it's been a really good year because uh, IQMU which is an international quiz that um, that was the brainchild of me and my batchmate we kind of made that into a reality and uh, the first ever uh, chapter of IQMU happened uh, in 2017 March and it was a huge success it was really amazing and uh, so much so that we are having it again uh, next year in 2018 and uh, academics wise it's been a really good year i mean third year subjects are probably not my favorite but even so it's like not been a bad year it's it's been i think a really good year 2017 was one of those years that you know it sneaks up on you and completely changes your life that that's how 2017 was for me so so i'm a little bit sad to see 2017 go mostly because it has been so good to me but i am excited to see what 2018 brings okay so what are my goals for the new year so in 20 2018 is actually going to be a really exciting year and i have a lot of things to look forward to so once i come back from my final year in uh, middle of february we have IQMU in a couple of months, which is uh, the quiz competition that, that you know, we created and uh, it's it's my baby. And so, of course, I'm really excited for, you know, it that it's happening for the second time and uh, it's, it's really going to be amazing. Uh, it's the last year that I'm heading this event because after IQMU 2018, I would be stepping down and, you know, passing over the reins to... Uh, to a colleague so uh, it's very special for me and I want to make you know I want to give it my all and I want to make this event a really memorable one for everybody who's come who's participating also once IQMU gets over I am actually gonna be moving out so I have been in the same hostel for uh, three and a half years ever since I started college like I came to Manipal and this is where I have been. I have, you know, had a single room, but I have been in the hostel for three and a half years and uh, I am finally going to be moving out into an apartment. So um, I'm really excited about that because uh, it's not the living alone part because I already live alone, but you know, more so having an apartment, it's different, you know. It's more responsibility for sure, but it's also like uh, something that I'm actually really excited about is that I'm going to be able to get a cook and have home cooked food because if there's one thing that I absolutely, absolutely, you know, hate about being away from home is that I miss home cooked food so much. So yeah, uh, that and uh, what else? I'm excited about final year in general because final year are like, you know, all the subjects of final year are my subjects, medicine, surgery, pediatrics and obstetrics and gynecology these are what my so mbbs is a dual bachelor's it's a bachelor in medicine and surgery and you know these are the subjects which my degree is for so of course i'm looking forward to you know the final year subjects which i know i will probably be you know breaking my head against the wall next year because they are difficult no doubt about it final year is considered to be the most difficult year of medical school and it's you know the year that you have to put in the maximum work but i'm not really afraid of putting in work i do not mind working hard and specifically if it's something that i really really love and uh, more so after the subjects of third year i am really looking forward to you know the final year course so the next question i get asked a lot is how to make the most of your clinical rotations and postings and uh, what is my advice for that and i think that nothing beats patient exposure when you're in the wards and when you're in the clinics spend as much time as you can with the patients take the history do the examination be as engaged as possible when the case is being discussed because it's personal ex from personal experience i've come to realize that nothing can teach you as much as you know the patient can no book no class no video no anything can 
teach you even you know a fraction of what just one patient can teach you so definitely you know like do not waste your hours in clinic and you know loaf off even if it is not your day to take the case even if you know it's not your day to present a case try to have as much exposure to the patients as possible and uh, to go along with that i have been asked of how i manage with the language barrier so uh, though most of you guys would already know that i'm from delhi but uh, since i'm studying in karnataka the local language here is kannada which i do not know so yes it is definitely a huge disadvantage not because you know medicine is all about being able to communicate with the patient and learning their problems and uh, not knowing the language is a huge hindrance to that so uh, the way i cope with it is that i have taken a couple of classes to try to pick up the language and um, also you know use it as much as possible talk to localites talk to patients and even if you know you know you're making mistakes and even if you stutter and even if you completely screw it up you will pick it up over time and my kannada is definitely broken and uh, i'm not very good at it but i'm still learning and uh, apart from that another thing that i definitely do specifically when you know it's a person who is uh, a lot of times patients come from like regions of karnataka where they speak a very specific dialect that i cannot understand so i try to speak to the patient party uh, most of the time their spouses or uh, children whoever is accompanying the patient would probably no or understand hindi or english so uh, that helps but uh, yeah not knowing the language is a huge disadvantage and if there's if you're in the same situation that i am in or i found myself in 2 years ago i would definitely say do yourself a favor and pick up the language as quickly as you can the next thing that i get asked a lot is that why do i want to give the us mle so in a lot of my videos i have mentioned that i'm preparing for my steps and um uh, you guys always ask me why am i giving the us mle why not indian pg or why not some other country like uk or australia and the answer to that is very personal you guys it is it has a lot to do with one what you want to specialize in and secondly and most importantly what kind of a life and what kind of a future do you envision for yourself do you see yourself uh, you know working in within the country or do you see yourself working abroad do you see yourself even if you see yourself you know working abroad do you just want to be abroad to like gain the exposure and then come back and eventually settle back in india or do you want to uh, you know settle outside a lot of like factors go into making that decision and it's a very personal thing so i like weighed in all the pros and cons and i did my research of all the sub all the exams that are out there be it plab be it uh, you know the indian pg us canada all of it and i i saw that the kind of future that i envisioned for myself fit best with you know me going to us for my residency and fellowship because i do eventually want to settle outside the country so um i'm not saying that you know settling within india is anything wrong it is a very very personal what i'm saying is that it's a very personal decision and you know it is it depends on what you want to do with your life so uh if you are in a dilemma and you know you're confused of whether you want to stay in india or you you want to give the us mle's uh i would definitely say first ask yourself where you see yourself going as a doctor what kind of a life do you want for yourself both personal and professional because a lot of factors going to making this decision and your life is not just about your profession it's also the kind of life that you want to live and you know whether you can do it in india or you want to do it outside and you know whether you want to settle outside or not and uh, you're okay to be away from family and all of that so, uh, and of course talk to you know your seniors and alumni of your college who have passed out and you know who are either right now doing their pursuing their post graduation in india or outside talk to them get their perspective talk to your professors if need be talk to Uh, career counselors and uh, guidance counselors and i think the biggest thing is that you should make an informed decision and most importantly guys do your research today google gives you any information that you want within you know less than 3 seconds if you have good internet connection so just just do your research you know even if you think that you for sure want to you know stay in india and give the indian pg 
still at least explore the other options and see whether it's something that you're interested in or not if not then great at least you know you're more informed and uh, yeah i did not i definitely did not take this decision in haste i took my time and you know did my research and did my due diligence and after that came to the decision that uh, the life that i see myself living and the kind of future that i want for myself is uh, compatible with you know going to us for my residency and fellowship and giving the us army so that is the reason why i'm giving the steps the next two questions are something that i get asked a lot and i'm going to answer them together because i think that they are very similar one is that what kind uh, what is my five year plan and what kind of a future do i envision for myself and uh, also uh, what speciality do i want to pursue what do i want to specialize in after my uh, undergraduate and after finishing mbbs and the answer to that is that i want to do a residency in internal medicine and hopefully after that uh, a fellowship in cardiology and uh, again the reason for that is that i really really enjoy medicine as a subject definitely much more than surgery i'm not saying that i don't like surgery i'm just saying that i enjoy medicine so much more so uh, that was a very easy uh, that was a relatively easy decision for me and uh, after that of course uh, you know fellowship is like years away so you know it definitely is something that i will take a call of after i finish my residency but uh, as of now i am interested in cardiology and guys this is in no way saying that i may not change my mind i could i am still you know in medical school i have one more year of medical school left and then my internship left so i have some time to you know see whether this is a decision that i am comfortable with i still have some time before i have to make the decision but uh, as of now i am pretty sure that i do definitely want to go into a medical specialty rather than a surgical one and uh, right now internal medicine sounds like the dream to me and uh, where do i see myself in 5 years i see myself hopefully uh, as an internal medicine resident in a hospital in the united states and uh, yeah that's i i think uh, everything else would be built around that who are my biggest inspirations and i mean i know this is going to sound so cliche but my biggest inspiration in life are my parents both of them have you know both of my parents are working and uh, they have built amazing careers for themselves and they are pioneers in their fields today from scratch like they started from you know the bottom of the ladder and uh most of the people they see the success they see the achievements and you know they see where they are today and they do not realize what the amount of hard work and effort effort that has gone into that i think i'm very blessed and very fortunate that i grew up seeing that kind of dedication and that work uh, that kind of dedication and that work ethic and you know seeing them put in the hours and that effort to you know be better you know put in more than what was required from them and i definitely know that whoever who i am today my work ethic and uh, my ambition definitely stems from both my parents so uh, my biggest inspiration in life are definitely my parents it might sound very cliche but it is true So that was all for this one guys. So I hope I was able to answer your questions and I'm really sorry if I was not able to get to your questions. I will definitely do another Q&A in the future and um uh, if you you know want to ask me anything else definitely leave them down in the comment section below. Now as promised I told you I'm going to be announcing my giveaway winners and before I do that I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. for the amount of support and love that you have given me and my channel and thank you so much for you know allowing me to be a part of your life and a part of your day and this giveaway was just a very small way of me trying to say thank you for that and uh, i loved reading your comments and uh, they definitely gave me a lot of ideas and inspired me to you know take my channel further in the coming year but uh, yeah without further ado the two giveaway winners are akshata kamat and sankirt kendalia i hope i'm not butchering your names you guys i'm going to put your names on the screen and in the description box please 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 email me on survivingmedicalschool96 at gmail.com with your address so that i can send you guys uh the packages and once again thank you everyone for uh 
taking the time to you know leave me your comments and uh, if you guys didn't win please do not fret because i have quite a few giveaways lined up in the new year so stay tuned on surviving medical school 101 so if you like this video or learn something new please do not forget to give me a thumbs up because that tells me that you care and do not forget to click on the subscribe button so that you can get notified every time i post a new video once again guys merry christmas i hope you guys had a wonderful year stay safe and i'm going to see you guys very soon bye bye